Hey everybody, it's me again, Adam Chapnick with the Security Token Academy. And we're here at Security Token Industry Launch Week with a dear friend of the show, none other than the CEO and founder of Start Engine, Mr. Howard Marks. Thanks for being with us, Howard. Thank you, Adam. So, we love having you on because you have such a unique insight into your part of the business and you see so much that other people don't get to see. What right now are you seeing that's most interesting? Well, it looks like what's happened is this. The first revolution in, in, in our industry of, of crowdfunding has been the Jobs Act. Right. This, this, this document signed in April 2012 has become a real amazing change in how securities are being sold and hopefully down the road traded. Mm -hmm. It allows the ordinary person to purchase securities in, in startups and that in our view, is a great democratization of capital. No doubt. The second big revolution in this perfect storm mm -hmm. is Bitcoin. And it's this whole cryptocurrency and blockchain technology industry that has exploded out of nowhere about a year and a half ago. Mm -hmm. And I look at this as the synergy of the two is providing an incredible opportunity for us and for the whole marketplace. Great, okay, so is that manifesting itself in certain things that you're excited about, about certain protocols, or how, is, how are you seeing those two things converge? Well, the first thing is the whole notion of crowdfunding is using the JOBS Act, which is regulation. Mm -hmm. It's all about following the rules that the SEC have put in place for um, issuers, companies who want to raise money, for companies like ourselves who are funding portals um, to help them raise the money, and for investors who receive shares uh, in the companies they invest. Mm -hmm. All of this is done basically following the rules per the SEC, and that's called regulation. Right. Now, when you look at uh, cryptocurrency and blockchain, they didn't do that. They went a different route um, outside of regulation. And that was okay when it was small, but as they became a multi-billion dollar marketplace, it, it really created a lot of fr friction with regulators who feel differently about what the, the cryptocurrency world looks at. They see a lot of this as being securities and they should be using regulation. Yeah, absolutely. So how's Start Engine approaching that? Are you guys, you're getting into STOs, right? And so how is that, how are you guys going to deal with that? So our view is this. You marry both the crowdfunding world with the cryptocurrency world, and now you have a much more interesting platform for consumers. And here's why. First, you want the consumer to have access to great deals but you also want them to be able to pay very quickly using cryptocurrencies. That's Bitcoin, that's Ether, that's all sorts of other cryptocurrencies. But secondly, you want to be able to trade what you've purchased. Mm -hmm. Now, the best thing you've seen in the cryptocurrency blockchain world are this notion that you can trade those tokens with other people. Mm -hmm. Now, that was done on a worldwide basis, freely traded with no regulation, and that's going to change. It has to change because um, it's all about uh, investor protection. And it's not even a decision that we make, it's the regulators who do, mm -hmm. do it. And the regulators have a, a tough job because a lot of the things were done on a decentralized basis. How do you regulate that? And so we found a way to put the two things together. So both the regulators and the people who are interested in Ethereum and de decentralization of smart contracts can live together. Mm -hmm. Cool, okay, so now I know you guys have been talking about uh, dancing into the broker-dealer space. Is that true? Is that what's going on with that? Yeah, there's a rumor that we've applied <laughs> to become a broker-dealer, and hmm. it's, a, it's, a, it's actually a, a true rumor. Hey, it's true, you heard uh, we it are, first. Well, well we, we, you know, we, we felt very compelled that this is the next step for our company. Okay, and what made you decide that that was the th thing to do? Well, we decided we want to be able to uh, build a trading platform, an ATS, alternative trading system, that allows um, tokens to be traded, these are securities, security tokens, traded on that uh, platform. In order to do that, you have to be a broker dealer. There's no way around it. Mm -hmm. And we felt compelled that we're already uh, registered with the SEC as a funding portal, we're members of FINRA already, so just this is just the next step. Mm -hmm. Natural progression. Absolutely, yep. and, and, and we feel that, it, you know, it, we, we see this as a big opportunity mm -hmm. because you issue the securities and now those shareholders have a place to trade them. They don't have to wait seven years or 10 years with a private equity. 
to holding, which may not be appropriate for them. Right. So have you guys considered getting into secondary trading, into a second, like becoming an exchange as well, or no? Is that maybe down the road? Well, that's what an alternative trading system is. It's a secondary platform. There you go. It's not called an exchange, and we have to use our words very carefully, mm -hmm. because exchanges, there are only 20 of them in the United States. Mm -hmm. That's New York Stock Exchange, NASDAQ, and it, the alternative trading system, there are about 50 of them today. There are many more being uh, proposed right now. We're one of them. Terrific. So what kind of issuers are you seeing? Is there sort of a trend, because you have a unique insight into this. Um, is there any sort of vertical that seems to be outstripping other verticals? Who, who's using the, the tools that you provide? So we, we analyze this mm -hmm. on a monthly basis, oh, and cool. we call it the Start Engine Index. And so what we publish on a monthly basis is what's going on in the crowdfunding industry. And we segment it by industry. So the number one, that the one that does most capital raise is in the food and beverage industry, specifically okay. uh, beer, spirits, really? uh, wine. Fascinating. Yeah. And then the second largest one is technology companies. Huh. So do you find what, any reason why that would be? Beer, spirits, and wine would be the biggest? Why? Well, the, it's easy to understand. It's a, it's a passion business. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of people who consume uh, the products and they want to be an investor as well. Interesting, so they like their drink so much they want to own a piece of the company. Well, wouldn't you want to own a piece of Heineken in the early days? <laughs> I wouldn't, uh, maybe as an investor, but not, yes. not, not as a passionate user. No offense, Heineken. Uh, so um, that's amazing. Okay, so in terms of your prognostication for the future, taking out the Howard Marks crystal ball, where do you see the security token ecosystem, let's say a year from now? So our view is this. One, regulation is going to be front and center mm -hmm. of the whole thing. So it's not basically going to other countries and onboarding investors willy-nilly by saying, well, it's not a big deal, we, we don't know their regulations, we're going to use US regulations on foreign countries. That's really not a good idea. Uh, going back to the US, security tokens in the JOBS Act is a perfect marriage. We're announcing soon um, ERC 1450, it's okay. our own smart contract. Oh. We built it from scratch. And the reason we built it, because we wanted a token that we know for sure meets every single SEC regulation. That is our goal. And is there any other characteristic of it that makes it different from what other people are using? Yeah, the main difference is you can't transfer it at all yourself. Hmm. It, it, it appears in your wallet, you can see it, you can look at it, you can enjoy it, but you can't transfer it. So, is this a stupid question, or how would you sell it in the secondary market? Well, so if you put it on the secondary market, which is a broker deal, the broker deal will take care of that transfer to the, to the oh, next okay. person. You don't do it yourself. I see. See, the idea that a cryptocurrency is freely transferable is an extraordinary big idea. Interesting. But it crosses a lot of bounds and barriers when you put a security inside of it. The security itself has problems. It has problems with state yep. regulation, federal regulation, treasure, treasury regulation. You can make a huge list of rules that need to be met. Yeah. And unfortunately, a decentralized smart contract cannot meet all those rules. Uh, one example is if you are an affiliate of the company, which means you're an insider, you're a large shareholder, you're an officer, mm -hmm. you're subject to rule 144, which dictates that you can't sell more than a certain percentage of what the market trades. Because right. or not, you would overwhelm the market. Right. And that would, yeah, that would not move. be a good right. thing. Well, the smart contract, they have no idea what's in the market at this moment. Interesting. The broker dealer does. Interesting, wow, so that's a big deal, ERC 1450. So is that done or is that in yeah, process? That is a draft that has been published on the Ethereum uh, request for comment. Okay, that's super cool. I would have led with that. That's amazing. Um, congratulations, I love it. So um, how do you think that's going to impact what you're doing in this coming year? So the way it's going to impact is we have customers. Customers come and say, hey, look, Howard, I need to raise money for my company. It's important to me. I need that money to grow my business, to be able to become successful. We love doing that, so we're yeah. going to help them raise money using regulation crowdfunding, regulation A+, regulation D506C, these Jobs Act regulations, we call them also exemptions, are phenomenal. They mm -hmm. really help these companies raise the money they need. Absolutely, you've we're shown gonna, it. Yes, and we will tokenize all of this using 1450. Got it. So ERC 1450 
every time we issue a share, there will be a token issue. Now, the shareholder may not know or care uh -huh. that they have the token. Right. If they do, they can look at it in their wallet. If, if they don't want to look at it, that's fine too. But it's, they'll appreciate the benefits that it confers, which is that it's compliant and safe and all of the things that you've built into it. They don't, need, they don't need to know how. The, way, the best way to explain it, it's a digital stock certificate. The yeah. old stock Everybody certificates right. were beautiful. You had them in your drawer, in your <laughs> file, file folder. You wanted to sell it, you had to take it, send it to the company, they right. would pay you money. This is a digital one, which it really is needed because Right now, everything is in book entry, which means that you issue the shares, they're recorded in the company or in the transfer agent, and that's it. There's no, nothing digitally or physical about the share. Now we gave you a digital stock certificate. Yeah, terrific. Well, you guys have been at the forefront of the equity crowdfunding movement. You got you were the first ones there, and now you're staying on the forefront by innovating with this ERC-1450 token. Uh, we love hearing what you're up to. I hope you'll come back soon and often to keep us posted. Very much appreciate it. Okay. We love working with your academy. Great. Thank you, Howard.